Hello everyone and welcome back to this day in history, our nightly look back at a specific day in history, where we take a look back at the events of a day, the historic context in which they took place, the historic ramifications of those events, and some people that were born on that day, and some people that died on that day. As always, if you have not yet, please hit the like button the subscribe button, the bell notification icon to be alerted anytime I post new content, and tell a friend. And now, without any further ado, this day in history, April the 20th. And on this day, in 1912, the first game was played at Tiger Stadium in Detroit and Fenway Park in Boston. Tiger Stadium, of course, was the home of the Detroit Tigers until 1999. Fenway, of course, is still in use by the Red Sox. Tiger Stadium had many quirky features. It had a flagpole in foul territory and an overhang that often players would later hit home runs off of. It also was the site of many historic events in baseball history. For instance, it is the home of the longest verified home run in MLB history. Babe Ruth hit a blast 575 feet in the stadium. Also, it is the site where Ruth joined the 700 club, becoming one of only three players in MLB history to hit 700 home runs. He was the first. The other two subsequent players that would hit that mark, also like Ruth, would at one time or another, be the all-time career home run king. Aaron, who was the second player to do so, would pass Ruth. Barry Bonds, who would become the third player to join the club, would pass Aaron. Um, It is also the site where Lou Gehrig voluntarily took himself out of the ballgame for the first time ending his consecutive game streak. This was not the site, though, where Garrick had played his last game. Um, This was on May 2nd, and Garrick had played his last game that eventually would ever be the last game he played on April the 30th. Fenway Park in Boston, which I mentioned is still in use, is the longest continuously used stadium in Major League Baseball, um, is um, a shrine to baseball. It is the home of the Green Monster, uh, Pesky's Pole. Um, It has that wonderful mechanical scoreboard um, um, along the Green Monster and many other features that fans love. The Chevron sign um, that you often see that that is a newer feature of course it wasn't there in 1912 um and um just a a beautiful facility that i would love to see um but one thing interesting that i was doing my research about fenway um is that during my lifetime fenway park has always been a very hard to come by ticket in baseball That was not always the case. Um, Until the late 60s, the Red Sox were plagued by low attendance, including two games in 1965, uh, which drew less than 500 fans. As the Red Sox increased uh, their winning and people actually wanting uh, to go see their games, they began uh, to sell out. And it became a uh, hard-to-come-by ticket. Um, In the early 21st century, the Red Sox announced controversial plans uh, to leave Fenway Park uh, for a new stadium that would basically be a copycat of the original. Uh, This led to an effort to save the stadium that ultimately proved successful and Fenway has been renovated since then and the Red Sox have announced that the stadium will remain usable until the 2061 
season. So, many, many more years of Red Sox baseball at Fenway Park are ahead. Births that occurred on this day. John Paul Stevens in 1920 in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Stevens was an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States from 1975 until 2010. He was appointed by President Ford. Um, at the time of his retirement, he was the most liberal justice on the court. Uh, and two opinions in which um, Stevens distinguished himself were the Second Amendment and capital punishment. Originally, on the court, Stevens had voted to reinstate the death penalty um, after the Furman decision. However, he later stated that that was the only vote on the court he regretted, and um, his vote to reinstate the death penalty. He had also wrote after being on the court, after leaving the court that he, if he was to write the Constitution today, he wouldn't include the Second Amendment. Um, he said that it was an outdated concept um, and was very opposed to the ideal later in life of private ownership of uh, firearms. Um, he was a decorated World War II veteran and is the third longest serving justice in history. The justice that proceeded Stevens in the seat that he sat on um, served the longest term in history, and that was William O. Douglas. Stevens died in 2019 at the age of 99. Had Stevens lived until today, it would have been his 100th birthday. And now I am going to only honor the victims, not the two perpetrators, the 13 victims of the Columbine Massacre in Littleton, Colorado. At the time, it was the deadliest school shooting in American history. Twelve students were killed along with one teacher. Um, and it has subsequently uh, been surpassed by other school shooting. Um, but really became the catalyst uh, for the discussion about school violence in this country. Uh, and was a turning point. And... Um, has become the colloquial term used by people when describing uh, school violence and school shootings. Uh, so, just a terrible day um, in the history of uh, shoot you know, violence in this country. Um, and um, if I am remembering correctly, um, was the first time that Fox News used the Fox News alert. The dong that Fox News uh, now plays, of course, around the clock for anything. Uh, but that was the uh, first time that they used it. Um, so I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great night.